Hey y'all, Kathy at North Star Prep Stutter. Well today we're going to talk about soil and I'm going to go through showing you how I get my garden beds ready, my raised beds, for planting here in Minnesota. And the soil really needs some help. I have to get some dirt in here, get some leaves, uh, start building it up, get some compost in. I want to at least get the soil ready before the rain comes. I can get that done and then everything's ready to plant next week. So here we go. So we have a strong north wind and uh, temperatures are dropping. It's in the 60s right now. Uh, it's beautiful and sunny, but in about three hours we're gonna have storms coming in. So I have to kind of get moving here. So for anyone who's a little bit older and needs something easier to handle and to work with other than a big bulky wheelbarrow, I have these garden carts and I love them. They're balanced well. I have a spot for my tools. Um, I can grab onto either side with my hands and pull them, push them. They're plastic so they're lightweight. I can throw it in the back of my car if I need to. It holds a lot of weight. I can load this half with brick and rock and it works great. So right now I'm going to load it up with my composted manure that I got. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of go through and pull some of these weeds that are growing up and um, kind of work the soil a little bit. You have to remember here in Minnesota we had a lot of snow. When I had three feet of snow piled on top of the soil, it really compacts it and makes it hard. And so I just want to work it a little bit more, um, probably get the shovel out and turn it over a bit. it gets so compact it likes to end up in like rock sized chunks they just have to kind of break apart so that the seedlings can can grow up through them much more easily a nice size weed I really like this hand claw tool uh, it just gets in here breaks things up I can get in under the roots of these weeds and just really work the soil very well. Now this bed is going to be for lettuces, so I know I don't have to work it very deeply, but I'm still going to shovel in the compost and, and the leaves and the fresh soil because it desperately needs some nutrients. So you can see how I'm starting to work it here already. It's just so hard, so it's got to be worked. This first time in the spring is uh, pretty strenuous in trying to work the soil, but the beauty of it is, is that I have not been walking on it. And so it's not as compact as it would be if I were doing rows in the ground. Right now I'm probably working it about four to six inches deep just with this. I'll get in with the shovel in a little bit and do it a little bit deeper. With the rains coming, these little weeds and any seeds that are in here will just explode. <laughs> and so I don't want to um, give them an opportunity right now to, to grow anymore especially the stuff that's in my new soil. For those of you who are new to my channel and wondering, this white stuff, it is not snow. It is shredded paper. And if you're wondering what I use it for, again, I'll have to show you in a little bit later video.
see those clouds starting to move in already. And I have got seven more beds to tend to. Okay, I'm trying to work up my comfrey bed a little bit just to loosen the soil so that um, rain and moisture can absorb into it much easier. And you have to remember that if you have hard packed soil that hasn't been worked, the water is not going to go down into the roots as well as the soil and your plants need air. If you have a lot of really good matter in your soil like straw and this is old comfrey leaves and other leaves and things like that, it will help to aerate your soil more too. Um, but you want to clear this away from your plant. So you can see how it's growing up. I'm already getting some bugs here eating it. So they're, they're out here and hungry. Um, but what I'm going to do is just clear this away from that so it's got some air and hopefully to keep the bugs away. Uh, some of these leaves I might uh, just break up and incorporate into the soil. Some of them, if they look a little rotten, I'm not going to do that. But uh, anyway, I'm going to clear out this around my comfrey plant. Comfrey is one of the greatest things you can grow on your homestead. Um, <laughs> it just never dies. It, uh, it'll just keep going and going. In fact, every year, like last year, it was more in the center here and I had to really cut out a lot. So that's why it's kind of growing off center here a little bit. But it'll, it'll grow out and um, I can always cut this in half and plant a second one in there. But they get so huge I don't really need to. Well, this is my bed that I'm going to put my herbs in. <laughs> no, those aren't herbs. This was fresh um, barnyard soil that I put in here last year. That, that's from my pile in the back there that's, yeah, covered with weeds. Um, most of these weeds are what we call here in Minnesota pigweed. I'm not sure what they're called anywhere else, and I know that there is some medicinal property to them, but I am not familiar with it, and right now I don't have time to research that or anything, so I'm just getting those out of the soil. Um, I will put a little bit of leaves and compost in these to um, bulk them up a little bit and get the soil up to probably about an inch or so, two inches from the, um, the top rim. Right now they're down about four inches and I like them a little bit higher because it, it goes down. So I, I was able to fill these with dirt last year. Um, it didn't, and then winter came. I didn't get a chance to um, get any fresh soil into the other beds. But um, the way these are growing so well and so prolific, um, I think the soil is, is good and it's, there's not a whole lot of issues with it. So I'm gonna keep weeding these and uh, hopefully I can beat the rain. Well, I'm getting close to being done with my little herb bed here. Um, getting the soil ready, getting these weeds out. You know, the soil is really, really rich and um, I know things are going to grow well in it. However, there's no organic matter in here, other than the weeds, of course. But um, so there's, there's nothing that's going to actually sustain it. And that's what I need to build up. Um, I need to start getting things so it can sustain from year to year uh, with the nutrition that goes in here. So it's not just like a burst of nutrition for one year and then the rest of it goes away. Because I've had that happen um, in the past. I mean, when I first built these six years ago, I filled it with all this kind of dirt and oh my goodness, everything was just huge and exploded. But um, over the years then it just, it waned and last year there it was really tough to get um, some really good production out of it. Okay I've got two beds left to do but I just wanted to take a little break here and tell you a couple stories. One is really kind of funny, but um, anyway, well, first of all, you can see how hard this soil is. You know, you get three feet of heavy snow packed on here for months, 
it just becomes rock hard no matter how moist it is no matter how good it is or whatever and so it's just so hard well last year I didn't do the shovel first to help loosen everything I was just going through with my hand trowel and everything well I ended up dislocating my wrist and I couldn't figure out for a few weeks why it hurt so bad until I finally remembered to tell my chiropractor and he's like yeah it's out <laughs> It's dislocated so I'm trying to be more careful this year I'm trying to that's why I'm going through with the shovel first kind of loosening it and then just briefly going through with my hand um, my little hand hoe so um, so anyway I am trying to be careful you know I'm not a spring chicken of course like I say and so I do need to um, be careful of what I do and pace myself the other thing, the other story I want to tell you, just to give you an idea of the weight of the snow and how it packs things down here, um, is I have a video out from this winter, the beginning of February we had um, a fishing derby and at that point the ice I believe was about 24, 25 inches thick, something like that, maybe even 27. Um, so anyway, we had the derby and I know that those of you in the south have a really hard time even comprehending what, it being so cold that the water freezes on the lakes. But it does get that cold that it freezes that hard um, and then it can get that thick. Well, at that point, beginning of February, we hadn't had a lot of snow yet, um, maybe a foot or something like that. Um, but anyway, after that, in February, March, we had a ton of snow. And what happened um, is, and you know the cold temperatures we had. I mean, we had down to 60 below wind chills. Well, that, um, <laughs> the ice got thicker and thicker with that. It got to 36 inches thick on most of the lakes around here. Um, and then we had three feet of snow on that. So you've got six feet before you even get down to the water level um, on the lakes. When the guys would go out, guys, usually they're men, but when um, people would go out to go ice fishing, um, they would, they first of all had to dig down to the ice. They had to dig three feet down through the snow to even get to the ice, and then drill a hole through the ice um, to get to the water. Well, by the time they hit the water, the weight of the ice and the snow on the lake, that mass down there, when you have this hole that you puncture through all that, it just shot this geyser right up out of the lake in the middle of winter. And you know, when it's 20 or 30 below, that's really cold and there's just, you know, cold water ice everywhere. But that gives you an idea of the weight of the ice and the snow that we had. So that's where that, that weight just compacts everything. So this first digging up in the spring is really hard to do and uh, kind of gets there no matter how well I've prepared the soil in the fall, it still is there. So, well, gotta get back to things. Got lots of good worms in here. They're kind of in shock right now, but there's a lot of worms in these beds. And here's another one. there I've got all of the beds primed and ready to go um, just turned over and smoothed out now I need to put down the composted manure and then the leaves and then the fresh new farmyard dirt but the rain is almost upon me so I think all I'm gonna have time for is to get the composted manure on here uh, which will be great for when it starts to rain and it's gonna rain for like five days um, so the rain can like seep the nutrients down through the, the old soil. Next week before I plant, I'll have to do the leaves and the, and the other soil. But for right now, I'm gonna finish up. I got eight bags of manure to put down. guys I've got the composted manure in and the rest is just gonna have to wait this weather is upon us it's a massive system and things are gonna be good and wet for a while so I've got to empty my water and um, do a couple other things around here 
before it hits and it's getting late <laughs> so anyway thanks so much for coming along with me and um, letting me share with you what I do in my garden um, this is what works for me this is how I'm having to build up my soil to get ready for the plants so you guys take care God bless and always have hope I'm hoping that it gets warm and sunny really soon <laughs> all right bye bye